Welcome to another make, repair or bin video. And here we have the top drawer of the bottom box. I have mostly 3 8 drive sockets in here. Uh, apart from the quarter drives over this side. And I've got uh, four wobble extensions. Um, universals over there which are half inch. Uh, I've got these things which I've had for years, which are metric inch. Uh, unfortunately broken the half inch one, which was also the 13 mil. Uh, but uh, the rest stood up pretty well. Had them since the 80s. Uh, the set here of deeps, which are bajo. I haven't had them very long, uh, probably a couple of years, but again, very good quality sockets. And I've got some wobble 3 8 drives, cheap those for when I need to get in somewhere that you can't normally get. And a uh, set of standard metrics from 8 mil up to 24 then set of pass through sockets slightly larger than the other ones and we've got allen keys and torques and then a full set of allen keys and torques which can be used with either 3 8 or half inch. And a couple of specialty things. I've got some inverted torques there. Uh, my Teng Tools ratchet, which I've had for donkey's years, again for, since the 80s. Small stubby. Little Japanese made one there. My go to 3 8 ratchet. It's nice fine tooth. An extendable 3 8 ratchet. Which I haven't used a lot. I'm sure I'll find use for it. And uh, got the tamper proof torques there. And some drain plug uh, sockets, different size squares, allens, etc., even triangles. Uh, I've got some quarter drive inverted torques, quarter drive wobbles, quarter drive deeps, and all these weird and wonderful things which are supposed to drive hex drive metric, AF, even torques, inverted torques. Don't know how good they are, because I haven't used them, because I've got all the others, but they're handy just in case I need something odd. On the far end there, I've got some nut removal tools. These again, 3 8 drive for removing rounded nuts or bolts. They've got serrated edges on them. Dig in. Quite nice. Used them quite a lot. And uh, that's it for this side of this drawer. The other side of the drawer, I have got my extensions. Three eighths, quarter, and half inch. Uh, I've got some. These are sort of wobble extensions and quarter drive ratchets, little quarter drive flexible ratchet that I made from a standard ratchet head, made a little handle for it with a ball in, indent inside. 
so it locks sort of locks in place quite useful little quarter driver which is also an extension and quarter drive long ratchet at this end reversible and flex lockable and the other side is for quarter drive bits use that quite a lot then half inch drive wobble half inch drive for impact that one and a slightly shorter one and T-bars and flexible drive for the quarter and a couple of flexible or wobble extensions for the quarters next one down the spanner drawer Starting at this side, with a set of Hilka spanners, all the way from 6mm to 32mm. Uh, a couple of skips, I think the 23 is missing, and 26, but I haven't really missed them, if you know what I mean. And I've got some open enders. Again, Hilka from 6 to 15. Some stubbies, little stubbies from 10 to 19. A set of old spanners which I've had since the adopt uh, 8mm to 22 and an odd 26 at the back I think it's a 26 is it? yeah that's the 26 yeah that's the 26 and I have aviation spanners 8mm to 19 the weird thing is they skipped the 12 on that one for some unknown reason set of profi lines nice slim spanners good quality really thin and comfortable to use and six millimeter up to 22 and a set of line wrenches or pipe flare nut wrenches again metric six to 24 then a small set of ratcheting spanners, reversible, and they're 8mm to 19, little stubbies, a homemade extension for the use of, so that you can hook these into a spanner, give a bit of extra leverage. And a small set of no brand chrome vanadium open ended six to twenty two carrying on in this drawer we've got a set of crank sets, crank spanners or heavily offset whichever you prefer metric again six to twenty I think uh, flex head ratchet spanners 10 mil to 19 not reversible but uh, useful nonetheless then another set not the flex head ones this time and not reversible 
6 to 90. Set of uh, crow's feet, 10 to 19s. Half moon spanners. These go from, I think, 8 to 22. A small box of spanners at the back. This one, not many people will have seen. It's a quarter Whitworth spanner. Used to be used on old battery terminals where the spanners wouldn't fit. That was the one. So there's an array of small ignition spanners and other bits and pieces in there. And uh, that's the uh, spanner drawer. Next one down, a screwdriver drawer. Various screwdrivers, pry bars, etc. Standard sort of draper. Phillips. And then through to Torx. Standards, small pocket screwdriver type thing, drivers, drive through screwdrivers with metal caps, set there up to this sort of size, and then precision screwdrivers, little tiny ones for doing smaller jobs, extra long, standard, and two different sizes of Phillips there and there and then three Torx ones and a magnetizer and demagnetizer for the screwdrivers and on the other side got a set of Stanleys, an old drive-through screwdriver, one of the largest ones I have here, another one which is not drive-through, been used as a chisel once but a little bit and chipped the handle, but again still working and usable, use that as a lever more than anything, and a set here of snap-on screwdrivers, few of them. Standard Phillips, smaller Phillips. And then I've got a set of Hilker uh, Torx screwdrivers. And of course the stubby snap-on. Some angled screwdrivers in this corner. Just here. And a long Sykes pigment. Electric tester screwdriver, 12 volt electric testing screwdriver, and standard slim with a special end on it. I use that for carburetors. Next one down, plier drawer. Some of my most used pliers are the uh, Nipex pointy nose, and a set of unbranded side cutters which I found absolutely brilliant. I had them for years, and Lucas, the uh, Prince of Darkness pliers, insulated. A set of pliers. Out of my grandfather's old toolbox. Again, Lucas. And then I have one, two, five sets there of circlet pliers, inner and outer, on the side here. And uh, a remote clamp pliers for hose clamps. Obviously, have the two rivet guns, 
some pliers for towing wire, tin snips, crimping pliers, wire strippers, two sets, and two sets of the cheap crimpers. And then on the slidey draw, I have my mold grips and some of them. A couple of things that I bought which I think are a little gimmicky, but they do tend to work. So I've used them a couple of times. When you've got plenty of room, you can get in there and use these on rounded things. This, again, a cheapo from Lidl's, but very, very useful. The more pressure you put on it, the tighter it gets. A couple of uh, adjustables, crescent wrenches. Got the Baho one there, the Japanese one there, and then a small monkey wrench or Stilson. Uh, again, nice little, handy little one. This one, ideal for doing track rod ends. And then the selection of mold grips. On this side of the drawer, we have clamps, clamp pliers for the uh, for clamps for radiator hoses, etc. Different sizes. Uh, a trim tool for removing trim. Also, the long two-way pliers, ideal for getting into those small areas. One with a 45, one pointy nosed, one standard, and this one, most useful for hoses, petrol pipes, all that sort of fuel lines, and another one angled, a straight pointy nose, and then a 90 degree angled. Then we have wire stripper, a punch, and then these pump pliers as they're called. Don't use these a great deal. Handy sometimes, not very often. Uh, this side again have three sets of crimpers and a wire stripper, standard pliers, and then going down into the tiny, the small side cutters, sprung side cutters, pointy nose, again sprung, and sort of pointy nose pliers that I bent for a particular job and then circlip pliers and oh, that's another set of circlip pliers for the large circlips and that's it for the prior plier draw now we have the hammer draw I would like to call it the tapstick draw. I have uh, what I call my, which is a t little toffee hammer. Um, I call my gasket hammer. Ideal for ta tapping out gaskets. Just a job. Um, got a tire weight hammer and remover. Several ball pain hammers. Small, medium, and large, and three lump hours, a rubber mallet. Have the aluminium faced hammer here, and a big rubber hammer. And that's it for the hammer drill. Next, we have the power tool drill. 
on pneumatic of a couple of drills battery powered battery angle grinder and uh, battery powered 3 8 drive one of these things Japanese one works very well came with a spare battery charger obviously have the pneumatic quarter drive ratchet 3 8 and a half inch and I've got two uh, nut runners half inch drive and on this side a 3 8 drive one and I've an air nibbler underneath here and just there a reciprocating saw and an air chisel and two die grinders there and there the bits for the air hammer just underneath this spare battery for my 20 volt um, nut runner and what else have we got in here oh yeah tracking gauge that gold thing underneath there this thing down here the gold long thing that is a tracking device tracking your front front wheels and we have a air pressure gauge for your tyres a couple of blow guns and uh, I think that's about it for in here and that's what I call the bits and pieces drawer and there are all sorts of things in here for a battery charger here for motorcycles does 6 and 12 volt doesn't overload them like a, a sm small CD power probe type thing which is quite useful got long lead on it um, obviously the timing gun and fluid here for this little toy which is for checking head gaskets and vehicles stethoscope a small pipe cutter um, pipe bender for brake pipe and, uh, turkey baster useful for getting brake fluid out of master cylinders a remote starter and carburetor synchronizer vacuum one four gauges safety glasses grinding paste PTFE tape glass cutter what else we got um, oh yeah for grinding valves knife sharpener all sorts of goodies like that for the use of and some instruction manuals bits and pieces draw. Right, next one down, bottom drawer, all the heavy gear. Got a leak down tester, a bearing puller, underneath that a heat gun, clutch alignment tool at the back, a vacuum tester, oil pressure tester, a jigsaw in the corner and a hole cutter, card and paper, ideal for making gaskets, uh, vinyl tools like a knife and uh, various other bits and pieces. Uh, here we have, uh, this one is my compression tester. Valve spring compressor over the far side there, and we have a power probe in this one. It's very tight here. Get this out. 
power probe, Sealy one. It also has a small scope built in. <coughs> And uh, an inspection camera, a cheap one, but it does work, which is the main thing, in colour, reversible, and uh, quite a useful piece of kit. And that's it for the bottom drawer. One more to go. And now the last drawer in the big box. I've got my welding gloves in here. And it's full of pullers. Some homemade, some bought ones. I've got the tie rod end remover. Ball joint remover, splitter. I've uh, got the spring compressors for suspension springs a brake pipe flaring tool very useful for on the vehicle uh, there's another pipe flaring tool in here somewhere can't see it at the moment and uh, normal three-legged and two-legged pullers and a couple of stilsons and a mini flywheel puller, a couple of mole grips that don't fit in anything else, and uh, what else have we got, oh yeah there's the, the other flaring tool, piston ring compressor, Small length of chain and steering arm puller for a Range Rover. And that's about it for in there. That's the last of the box. Because this is going to be a long video, I think I shall make a second video for the other toolbox because that again is full and uh, before we go all of those who are guessing what this item is it's a cam setter for a Jaguar 4.2 engine bought it about 35 years ago used it twice been in my box ever since Thank you very much for watching my second video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.